Glenn, we're in a healthcare environment. Why is it so important to disinfect this environment? Because the people within healthcare settings t do tend to have um, serious illnesses, they can be immunocompromised, which means they're very prone to infections. So what we need to do is clean and disinfect equipment like the bed between every patient so that we're not transmitting diseases from one to the other. Okay. How do you do it? Can you show me? I can. A life clean. Wet the wipe. And then open the wipe out fully mm -hmm. so that we get the biggest surface area to work with. Pin it between your fingers so that we've got a nice big surface area there and it's secure. Sometimes when you're cleaning a surface, what happens is the wipe can separate from your hand, which means you're going to contaminate your glove and you're going to have to change them, wash your hands, put your yeah. gloves on and so on. Just popping it there secures it. Okay. So don't overstretch. Why is that? Why you don't overstretch? So that you protect your back and also so that your PPE doesn't go onto the surface and become contaminated. Okay. And then we're going to work in a firm S shape, nice and tight. You can see the disinfectant is going onto the surface and there are no gaps. And that's important because we want to ensure that we remove any debris from the surface rather than just move it around. The liquid that's on the surface now is the disinfectant that was within the wipe. Anything that we could physically remove by the manual action of the S shape is on the wipe. The residual disinfectant that's still in the wipe will make what we picked up safer for when we put it in the bin. This will sit on here until it dries. Drying time will be about five minutes, but the kill time is only two minutes, so that we know that anything's on that is dead. So we're not having to reapply liquids, we're not having to clean it all over again. That will do its job. And that's called contact time or dwell time. So I've completed cleaning the bed. Although the wipe is still wet, we would not clean another surface within the room because the wipe is now contaminated and we will transfer that contamination onto the uh, other item. So. If we want to continue cleaning within the room, we get a separate wipe, but we've now completed cleaning the room, so I'm going to dispose of the wipe and dispose of the gloves. Okay. So what I do is keep that wipe in my hand, pull the glove over so the wipe is now inside, any contaminants are inside, pop it in your other hand, again, invert it, so any contamination is all tied up within here, and then just pop it in the bin. Can you use this everywhere? Absolutely. Floors, walls, materials, fabrics, vinyl, stainless steel. I have a stainless steel trolley okay. here that I can show you. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the important things you'll see, I've got some little bits and bobs here. Um, what we need to be sure of is that something that is visually clean yeah. is actually organically clean. And there are a couple of ways in which we can test that that are very visual and helps people to understand what we're saying. So they just assume because a surface looks clean, it actually is clean. Okay. So we have a UV torch. And if you can take a look, you see all the little marks oh, on yeah. here. And that is debris that wasn't removed when it was cleaned. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a swab of the surface. This is an ATP machine. And what it does is it measures the volume of proteins on the surface. It has a liquid in here called luciferase. Mm -hmm. That reacts with the protein. And what that does is produce a number in relative light units. So for the purposes of, of this, the calibration on this is up to 50 as a result is a pass. 50 to 99 would be an advisory that you perhaps need to amend your technique a little bit. Okay. Anything 99 and above is an absolute fail. Okay. I'm so, curious about this. <laughs> it's interesting. <Yeah. laughs> Definitely interesting. So when you swab, mm -hmm. you choose an area 10 by 10 centimeters or four inches by four inches. So we're going to mark it out. And what you do is whilst twisting the swab, you move across horizontally and vertical. Either way you want to do it, it doesn't matter. So we're going to go across here and you're twisting to cover as much surface area of the end of the swab as you can. Mm -hmm. You pop it back in here, crack the end and that allows the liquid to be squeezed through. Okay. So we just give a little wiggle, pop it in the machine, press run test. And as you can see, it's a 10 second clock, during which time it's calculating how much debut there is on the surface.
Oh, it's oh dear. Fail. Yes. <laughs> so it's 338. Okay. And read it upside down. Yes. So we're going to clean it with Live Clean, which will disinfect as well. And then we can see the result. We'll do it again. Okay. Let's do that. So exactly the same method, no matter what you're cleaning. Okay. The same principle applies. The principle of cleaning is exactly the same. So you wet your wipe, and again, we're so going never to put, uh, add the liquid on the. Material. You can do. You okay. can do. Some people use sprays. Um, there's all sorts of methods of putting it on. You can have pre-dose wipes. So we have packs that you can just tip. Okay. 500 mils of liquid in and then you leave it for five minutes and you've got a bag of, of moistened wipes. It depends how often you need to use the product as to how you'd want to do it because you don't want a bag of wet wipes sitting around for weeks on end if you don't really use them very often. Mm -hmm. It just depends on the environment. Because this is a healthcare setting, obviously it's, they use them all the time. Yeah. So that would make sense. But in other areas, it might be an occasional use because you, you're covering right across the board, not just healthcare. It could be used anywhere. Okay. Okay. So no matter what surface you're cleaning, it's the same S-shaped motion that we're talking about every time. So you can see the surface is wet. Mm -hmm. Again, it's disinfectant on it. We need to leave that now to dry. Drying will take about five minutes, but the actual kill time is two minutes. Okay. So anything on that will be dead. You wouldn't dry the surface because you might introduce something to it. So you would just leave it to dry. And then you test again. And then we'll test again. Okay. So we've allowed the, the two minutes and also the extended time for it to dry and it's mm -hmm. now ready to retest. Okay. So if you recall, it was 338 previously. So we're going to do the same area. So we've got approximately 10 centimetres by 10 centimetres. Yeah. We're twisting the swab and going vertically and horizontally across to pick up whatever debris we didn't have in there. Mm -hmm. Give it a click to release the liquid. Same little wiggle. And then we pop it in the machine. So now it has to be passed then? We would like it to be. Yeah. <laughs> and we've now got and it's a pass. 68. That's good, right? Yep, so it's gone from 338 to 68 and that's one wipe in one direction. Yeah. Allowing the contact time. If you do this again, would it be cleaner then, or? If we left it longer, yeah. the, the ah, okay. disinfectant will continue to yeah. use. So we could do it in 10 minutes and it would probably be even lower. Okay. But that's an acceptable level for someone to be reusing a piece of equipment. Yeah. So now this is clean with only one product and one wipe. It is. Um, it may have taken more wipes on a bigger surface, mm -hmm. but as long as you use one at a time in one direction on one item, you will get excellent results. Okay. It's going to remove planktonic layers. It removes biofilm. Lots of products don't. It's not harsh. Um, lots of things like bleaches and that type of thing. The, the sporicidal level killers tend to be very harsh and they create problems both with equipment, with um, bleaching uniforms, creating hazards from a, a breathing point of view. You have to be careful where you use them. Yeah. Because this is environmentally friendly. There's no bad additives in it at all. There are no hazard warning signs on this product. Not because they ought to be there and they've not been put on, but because it doesn't need them. Okay.